Well, today is kind of bittersweet because I am selling the Nobo 10.6. Now, if you're watching this, you've probably seen my ad for the unit up for sale. And this video is for you, for prospective buyers. And it's really gonna be a walk around pointing out what makes my 10.6 unique compared to all the other units on the market used or new. Now, regardless of whether you're interested in purchasing my Nobo 10.6, you might wanna check out some of my other videos. A few months ago, I did a one-year owner review where I talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly with a 10.6 from Forest River in the Nobo line. And then I've done a bunch of other videos on some of the individual mods and upgrades that I've completed on this unit. And that's really what this video is gonna be focusing on is just walking through, again, what makes this Nobo 10.6 unique compared to all the other 10.6s on the market, new or used. So as we begin, I just wanna say a special thanks for taking the time to check out my unit for sale. And it's a little bit windy outside today, but hopefully everything will come through nice and clear on the video. So we'll just start out here in the front and first off you've got this nice tongue storage box that I've added on here and it gives you the ability to store everything like the cords and your hoses everything that gets dirty and grimy outside the unit so you don't have to bring that on in the inside you can see of course your LP tank is in there as well so that's one upgrade that for me has been a game changer just being able to put everything outside like that and have all that storage on the outside course you also get all these things with the unit so you can see you've got your water hose your anderson leveling blocks of course you've got your 30 amp power cord your 30 amp surge protector adapters you've got you know stakes even a little uh, wisp broom right here so basically everything you need to go camping is included with the unit you could pull away today with the unit and go straight to your campsite and be all set and ready to go so that is the tongue storage box then you've got up front a bulldog manual tongue jack there that was replaced from the factory the oem one that was shot but you'll notice this one it does have a drop leg on it which is super handy because then when you're cranking up and down you don't have to go all the way up all the way down you can just take this pin out each time once you're resting on your on your uh, coupler on your ball rather and then you can just pull that pin out and you're good to go so that's a really nice feature there another thing that's unique on this unit is it does have both the seven way which is standard here for a seven-way connection. I'll just show you what that looks like. And it also has the four-way, the four-pin connector here. So if your tow vehicle doesn't have a seven-way connector, you don't have to do some kind of clunky adapter. You can just plug in the four-way adapter and you're good to go. You'll see back in the back there, there is a battery cutoff switch. Now that's something they have since added, that Forest River have since added to the Nobo. I think it was, oh, I think right around the beginning of the 2021 builds maybe. And so uh, I went ahead and added that to this. It's super handy because you can just flip that switch and it cuts the battery off completely from the unit so you don't have to worry about draining your battery when you've got it in storage there. All right, we'll keep walking around the front here and we'll take a pit stop here in the kitchen. You can see all the, the little camp kitchen uh, supplies are included there with the unit. That is all there. And then here's a bonus. So these knobs are not melted. Now, if, if you're a no owner, you'll know why that's kind of a joke, but basically the size of this stove, it's uh, notorious for people kind of uh, melting these knobs, getting a pot too close to them. So I've got two fresh, brand new knobs on here, nice and clean there. Then back here, we've got the latest Dometic CFX refrigerator. It's a compressor driven refrigerator. The one that it came with, the uh, buttons on it on the front here had failed. They had uh, started cracking. And so nothing was wrong with it mechanically. It worked, it cooled everything, but Dometic was kind enough to send a replacement and they sent me this, this CFX model, their latest line. But what's really cool about this one is you can actually make ice cubes while you're camping. That's right, you can actually put ice cubes in here and this compartment gets colder than the rest and so it keeps everything nice and cold kind of like a little mini freezer there all right let me come around to this side and show you a couple things that are unique in here in the kitchen compartment so you can see there up top you've got an inverter it's a 400 watt inverter and what that does basically is it means you can use 120 volt electricity off the grid so if you're somewhere in a national forest or somewhere at a campsite where you don't have uh, shore power 30 amp shore power then you can still plug in a laptop or you know something else that's small up to 400 watts and it'll run off the battery there so that's really handy you've got an outlet out here obviously in this bay but then there's also one inside and i'll touch on that when we get on the inside so that's a really nice feature to have there and then you'll also notice that in the back there you're seeing a blue water filter hanging down 
So what's really cool about this Novo 10.6 is you never have to carry around a water filter at your campsite. So when you're plugging into the city water connection and you plug that in on the outside with the water hose, all the water goes through that blue filter. And that's basically just a household 10 inch, you know, filtration cartridge right there. And it gets rid of a lot of the sediment and a little bit of the chlorine taste. So that's really handy. You never have to remember to bring that or, you know, don't have to worry about leaving it behind at your campsite. Then you'll notice directly to the left of that blue water filter is a water uh, pressure reducing uh, valve or pressure reducing regulator. And basically at a lot of campsites, the water pressure is really high. And so you typically have to put a little uh, cheap and expensive water pressure regulator uh, on the outside in line with your hose. And they're really uh, just poorly made. Sometimes they reduce your flow overall. And this one's just a residential PRV. And so it performs just like the one in your house. So again, it's one less thing you gotta worry about when you're going camping. It's already built into the unit. You don't have to worry about high water pressure anywhere because you've got that PRV. So a really nice feature to have. All right, and let me touch on one thing I forgot up front here, speaking of power there earlier. So directly behind your storage box, you've actually got a 100 amp hour lithium battery from Battleborn. Y'all, this is a, a game changer when you're off the grid compared to the cheap lead acid batteries that the dealer puts with these units. And so with a 100 amp hour battery that's lithium like that, you can go all the way down to zero you know with lead acid batteries you're really not supposed to discharge past 50 percent because it really just kills the the life of the battery but with lithium batteries you can go all the way down to zero if you choose to and that gives you full access to 100 amp hours so it's really a game changer especially when you're off the grid so most of the time you can get anywhere from two to five days off the grid without ever recharging and it just kind of depends on what you're using with uh, lights and the refrigerator and other things. But usually two to five is a good estimate on average. All right, let's hop over here to the pantry compartment. So you can see here, not only do you have a little water basin, but you actually have a proper faucet. So this is something that I also added. You know, it comes with this water port on the side here, which is handy. You've got, you know, a nice little hose on the end of there. But for me, sometimes you want to have a an actual faucet where your hands don't have to be holding a sprayer. And so this is a hands-free and it functions just like one in your house. You just turn the valve on and the cold water comes out of there. So that's really nice. And then you'll also notice that the pantry compartment has been refinished with a uh, more a heavier duty enamel finish. And this one's held up a lot better compared to the factory one there. Of course, you also get this nice folding table outside, makes it really handy when you're cooking. And then let's go ahead and hop inside and check out what's unique inside my 10.6. So you can see this one has the, uh, the vinyl flooring. Some of the ones have a, more of a, uh, like a diamond plate mat that's down permanently. This one does have the vinyl flooring and I believe that's what they're doing still on the current builds now. But I also do have a diamond plate mat that you can roll out over here. And so this comes with the unit and it's already got the, uh, the cutouts for the D-rings. And so that's, you know, helpful if you're wanting to protect the floor or maybe you're hauling a four wheel or something, you don't want to get it all muddy inside. And so that mat is included with it. All right, inside, let me point out just a few things that are unique. And uh, just remember, we are off the grid right now. So everything you see that's running is running off that lithium battery there, that 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium battery. But first of all, you can see that is where the, the uh, inverter outlet is up in the front here. So you get one standard outlet from Forest River, and then this outlet here is attached to the inverter. And so right now this is hot, 120 volts, and that's powering, of course, the TV that's on right now. And it's got a convenient on-off switch, so you don't have to go out every time you want to turn the inverter on and off. But once you turn it on, you've got 120 volts at the outlet there, so that's really nice. Then you also have this Victron Energy Battery Monitor. This is super helpful. It just kind of takes away that range anxiety that when you're out off the grid and you're worried, you know, how much battery power do I have left? How much is it going to last? So you can actually scroll through some of these different settings here and it'll tell you a lot of stats. And one of the ones that is most helpful to me is this one right here. So this is telling you approximately how many hours you have to empty based on your current consumption right now. So in other words, if I keep all the lights on, the TV on, everything running the way it is exactly right now, this is how much I'm gonna be lasting. Now I've got a lot of things on right now, so if you're looking at it going, wow, that's not 
too great on the battery life well it's because we've got a lot of things running here but that's really helpful and then you can also connect this to your phone through bluetooth and see this same information on the phone so it's really really handy then you also have here an upgraded progressive dynamics converter charger that is compatible with the lithium battery so most rvs come with factory converters from wfco and they're not fully compatible with lithium batteries, meaning they'll typically charge the lithium battery up to a certain voltage thinking it's full, when in reality the lithium batteries may be 80 to 90% full. So this is a, an upgraded one from Pro Progressive uh, Dynamics, and this one is fully compatible with lithium batteries and so it charges the battery to full. You can see everything's nicely labeled there and it is a smart charger. So what that means basically is it ramps up full speed when you first plug in and the battery needs a lot of charging and then it can kind of taper down that charging as the battery starts to get full and then keep it topped off. So that is certainly a nice feature. And you'll also notice up here, there is a gimbal fan. So that's been added. This is a native 12 volt gimbal fan and it's got, I think three or four different speeds there. It's got a timer on it. You can point it any direction you want. But one of the weaknesses, in my opinion, of the Nobo 10.6 is it doesn't have 12 volt ventilation from the factory. And so that's why I added this. That way you've got a source of ventilation when you're off the grid, since it just has the giant, you know, Dometic 13.5 AC up top there. All right, and then something else that's a little bit unique here are these cushions. So in, I believe it was mid 2021 on the year change, they started putting these nice vinyl cushions instead of cloth and so mine originally came with the cloth cushions which uh, you know nothing was wrong with them from a uh, comfort firmness standpoint but the vinyl in my opinion is a, a lot more sanitary easier to clean uh, you know you don't have to worry about things staining it and so I went ahead and upgraded those by uh, simply ordering them through Forest River so that's definitely nice to have those vinyl cushions all right so I think that's about it on the inside here go ahead and shut this door walk around to the back side here and then let's take a look at the tent on top because for those who have researched the 10.6 you know that it does have a tent option a rooftop tent option from forest river and it is the frs model of tent which is not a bad tent by any means but i wanted something that was a little bit larger and so y'all check out this 230 this is the breezeway it's the breezeway 72 and that means it is 72 inches across here so that's right it is six feet across here and then eight feet deep so it's larger than a king size mattress essentially and this is a really well-made rooftop tent i think it probably is a little bit better perhaps than the frs brand that comes with uh, the nobo 10.6 from forest river if you spec it out that way but one of the cool features of this tent is that it has light suppressing technology in the fabric so check this out we've got just the front and back windows open but notice how dark it is along the sides here that no light is bleeding through and this is kind of cool because a lot of times when you're camping you know depending on the time of year the sun might come up really early and maybe you want to sleep in a little bit and so this allows you almost like you're at a hotel room and you can keep the shade shut and uh, keep it real blacked out inside so that's a really nice feature but otherwise it's a pretty basic rooftop tent it does have some storage up here where you can put your keys and some lighter items. And then of course, outside you have boot bags that come with it. Very comfortable. It's got the built-in mattress, like most rooftop tents. It's about a, I think a three inch thick mattress there. And then of course it does have windows on the side and a kind of a skylight up top there. It's a really nice tent. I've been really impressed with this one. Never had any issues with, uh, you know, rain getting in or wind or anything like that. Really well made tent. It's actually from Australia originally, and they've been, they've been uh, distributing them in the US for a couple years now. So really, really nice tent. Well, hopefully that gives you an idea of what makes my Nobo 10.6 unique. And if there's one other thing I could mention, it's just that it's been meticulously maintained and cared for. Now, don't get me wrong, it's been well used and enjoyed for sure, but hopefully you can see in the pictures in the video just how well it's been cared for inside and out. Now, one of the things with RV ownership, Oftentimes, if you buy a brand new RV, you're left kind of sorting out issues for the first few months or maybe the first year. And so remember, here with this Novo 10.6, I've done all that already. I mean, this thing has been put through all kinds of tests 
and use. And so all those issues have been sorted out. Now, I imagine those watching have two questions. First, why am I selling the Nobo 10.6? And if you follow some of my other videos, you know that I rent this out on the side. And it's largely been an experiment, kind of a side hustle to see what kind of income it could generate. Uh, and long story short, it's proved to be very successful. But for me personally, it's been a big strain on my time. And so I'm really looking to spend that time in other ways. And so that is my primary reason for selling the Nobo 10.6. But I have thoroughly enjoyed owning the Nobo 10.6. And if I was ever in the market again for a similar unit, I would absolutely have no hesitations to buy it all over again. I think it's really one of the best values in the market right now in this size. And what I really love about it is that you don't have to have all these intricate plans and details when you wanna go camping. I mean, if you wanna drive down a forest service road and pick a campsite, you've got everything you need right here. You don't have to worry about fitting in because it's so compact and it's so easy to maneuver and fit in campsites. So that's really my favorite thing about the Nobo 10.6. I think it's just really a great value. And so that kind of brings us to the second question. Why is he asking so much for this unit? Does he not realize that I can get a, a new unit for almost the same price? And and so, yes, I understand that. If you were to take all the upgrades and mods that were done on my 10.6 and add them up, you'll see that it really is in line with a gently used item that's been very well cared for. And then you add all those upgrades and mods, and I'm not even factoring in the labor and the work and the time that went into that. And so that's kind of where that price falls in line. And again, folks, everything you need to go camping is already included with my 10.6. You could literally buy it, drive straight to a campsite, and you would be all set. Now, in my opinion, the condition of my 10.6 is almost as good as new, if not better, considering that all the bugs and kinks have been worked out already. And I'll just throw in a quick side note for those interested in what can fit inside if you're going to use it as a toy hauler. I've got a Honda Rancher, which is a full-size quad. It's fairly large, and it fits in here comfortably with a little bit of room to spare. But let me go ahead and give you the dimensions. I've got my laser tape here, and first I'm going to shoot off the back wall all the way forward to the cabinets in the front there and that measurement is seven feet three inches so that's from the back to the front then we've got the width inside here from sidewall to sidewall and that's going to be five feet three inches and then every once in a while i get a question about fitting a, a bike in here diagonally you know across here and so let me just give you what that dimension looks like from corner to corner here and that one is eight feet nine and a half and then last i'll just give you the opening because obviously you have to clear this opening in the back and so i'll give you the width and the height of this opening here so from side to side we are looking at four feet almost seven inches so four feet six and seven eighths and then from the height from the bottom to the top we're looking at four feet, two and seven sixteenths of an inch. So that is the opening that you've got to clear. And then you can use those other dimensions that I gave you for the inside clearance. Well, thanks for taking the time to check out my Nobo 10.6 for sale. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you're about to get a bonus. If you can name this animal right here on the side of my Nobo 10.6, I will give you a thousand dollars off my asking price. That's right, if you can name, properly name and identify this animal, on the side, you'll get $1,000 off my asking price. All right, well, thanks for watching.